Welcome to Friday Fish Facts. I'm your host, Ron DeSantis. Today we're doing a species spotlight on my favorite African cichlid, Pseudotrophius solosii. Pseudotrophius solosii are a dwarf ambuna. The males, which are the blue ones here, they get about a little bit bigger than three and a half inches, and the females, they only get a little bit bigger than three. And that's a female right over there. What I love about this fish is that you get two different colors in one. You can have a species entire tank, but you get two different colors. You've got the yellow with the juveniles and the females, and the blue with the males. The only other African cichlids I keep are these Maltese, shell dwellers, from Lake Tanganyika. Pseudotrophia solosii, or Chindongo solosii, are from Lake Malawi. Located in one part of the lake called the Taiwan Reef, the pH is between 7.7 .7 and 8.2. I keep three Cynodonis in here with them, which are from Lake Tanganyika, but the pH is very similar, and one Calico's bristlenose that keeps this tank nice and clean for me. Other tank mates you might want to consider with them are Pseudotrophius asii and Yellow Labs. Just make sure you're choosing something that is also mildly aggressive. These fish are critically endangered in the wild, but there are efforts currently underway to help repopulate them. If you Google tank size, you're going to find that 55 gallons is the smallest they require. But I find they do just great in these 40 gallon breeders. I've got a Fluval C4 on the back there. And I've got my heater positioned just underneath so it evenly distributes the heat throughout the tank. Now most people don't plant their African cichlid tanks, but Jungle Val, that's a plant that's going to grow in the harder water for you. I like plants, so I like to have a little bit in there with their with them, but definitely not a requirement. You also see the coral here. That's one big piece of coral right there in the front. The entire substrate is made of crushed coral. There's a petrocola under there. And some bigger chunks of coral there all along the bed. The shell with the algae on it there, that's also helping raise this pH. There's another female we've got hiding under there and a bunch of juveniles out and about. You see that there's some algae on the back, that's okay. We've got a bristlenose in here. Cleaning it up so I don't scrape that off just to keep him happy. He's got some food there. There's our male under there. When you're first buying these fish, I recommend starting out with a trio. They're gonna breed for you. You don't need to buy more than one male. And you're gonna be able to sell these fish and make some money on these fish if you're interested in doing that. Now this is just a 20 gallon tall, just your regular 20 gallon. There's a couple of filters on here, just like the AquaClear 30s hanging on here. And this is kind of a breeding tank or a fry raising tank. Um, sometimes I'll put uh, pleco caves in here and let the bristlenose grow out. Or sometimes I will put the mamas in here by herself. And then about a day after she spits out all the fry, then I move her back into the main tank, and then I let the fry grow out in one of these tanks until they're big enough to either go back into the 40 breeder or to be sold. She's holding. So I'm going to take some duckweed out of this tank here and I'm just going to start dropping them in. You can, if you look from the top, you'll see that they start going after it. For all those people that don't like duckweed, this is going to clean up your duckweed. Got this tip from Tozawa Tanks. Okay. 
With these Zambunas, you don't want to give them a lot of high protein. Blood worms, never. You can give them uh, brine shrimp, especially baby brine shrimp when they're brand new, and micro worms, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this is their daily diet. This is what they get. I go veggie kelp flakes, especially for the younger ones, and then I break up these veggie rounds for them. Let's give them a few and then we'll watch, watch the meat. Sprinkle, they're just gonna attack the, t the surface there. You can see from the top as well. And then as I was saying with the veggie rounds, instead of just dropping a big piece in there, I just break them into small pieces like this. You can see a little piece there and drop them in. Now, if you do have a female in there carrying eggs and you're not sure if she's carrying eggs, she's going to go up to the food, but she's not going to eat it. That's another, oh, it's splashing all over the place now. That's another telltale sign that she's got eggs or fry in her mouth. Okay, so here we are with Ben's 10 gallon. Now, this is kind of borderline saleable size. I usually like to get about an inch. They're about three quarters of an inch there. I have sold four out of this group just because that's all I had for sale and somebody really wanted them. Uh, this brood here, I think there's 10 left. I sold four. Three of them died because I gave them, I gave them the frozen brine shrimp and too much and they caused them to bloat. But this is the microworms. This is another option for you, especially if you don't want to hatch and you still want to do live worms. You just drop it in there, let your finger hit it. They're going to go after them. And then I'm going to add some of the flakes as well that I was giving the adults and juveniles. So these fish were born in this tank. I had a female in this 10 gallon. She spat out the fry. As you can see, it's not really set up for an African cichlids, but we've got to make sure that pH is up. You will see that there's some coral in here. There's a big shell in here to keep that pH as close to eight as we can. And they'll either grow up a little bit in here until they get sold or some of them, well, I always keep a few out of every batch. They'll move into the 40 breeder. All right, these fry are about hour and a half old. A few more there. Here's Mama Pseudotrophia Celosii. Oh, they'll probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 in this batch here. Join me next week for another edition of Friday Fish Facts.